Mayroon ho tayong Kids Church uh, to be led by Ate Malu and Ate Carmelina. So, the Kids Church, you may now go uh, doon po sa area na yun, sa may reception area, uh, so that you can have uh, time with yung two beautiful teachers. Sabi mo, salt and? Salt and light. Paano lagi salt and light? Ah. Salt and light. Okay, so yun po ang Ano niya? So, you can proceed there uh, before we start the message. I also would like to welcome si Mr. Macaranas, Mr. Jose Macaranas. Uh, welcome po muli. Uh, siya po ay galing ng Canada. Uh, hindi ko alam na marunong pala siya magluto. Uh, may mga pinupost po siya na nagluluto po siya ng mga native na mga pagkain ho natin, pinakbet and all that. So sabi ko, dapat makatikim po kami ng inyong luto. <laughs> Dapat makaranas ng makara- ayan, makaranas ng, <laughs> ng yung luto po ninyo. Di ba parang uh, akala niyo yun yung magpo-post silang napakasarap na pagkain sa Facebook tapos anong gagawin namin dito mga <laughs> Oh, di ba? Naglalaway ka doon tapos ganoon. Lalo na yung luto po niya, yung mga ano, native na pagkain, that's what I, I also really like. Meron nung kwento ng mag-asawa ng, uh, yun po ay Mother's Day. Okay, so yung pagising na pagising nung asawang babae, sabi niya, Tay, Tay, sabi niya, tulog pa yung, ano, tulog pa yung asawa niya, Tay, gising, sabi niya. Oh, bakit, bakit, sabi niya. Mother's Day. Alam mo ba yun? Ah, ganun ba? Oh, Mother's Day. Uh, may regalo ka sa akin, di ba? <laughs> sabi niya, ah, oh, 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 sabi niya, meron, di ba? Oh, uh, makikita ngayon, ko ngayon din, sabi niya. Ah, uh, sabi na, sabi mo, lalaki, ah, uh, uh, oh, sige, makikita mo rin ngayon, 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 ngayon din, sabi niya. Oh, sige, ah. sabi ng asawa ng lalaki, pikit mo mata mo. Ah, pinikit ng mata ng babae. Ano kaya to? Sabi niya. Oh, sabi, makikita mo ngayon din, sabi ng asawang lalaki. Pikit mo mata mo. Oh, ano nakikita mo? Sabi ng asawang babae. Wala. O oh, alam mo na, ibibigay ko sa'yo. Huwag <laughs> uh, niyong gawin yun, ha? <laughs> Naku po, away ho yan. Actually, nung pagpunta po namin dito, sabi niya, oh, Mother's Day, wala pa akong greeting. Oh, nga, nakalimutan na. But that's what happened. So, happy Mother's Day, Uli, especially for my wife. Okay? There's something about uh, that story, yung, although it's a joke, na when you close your eyes, you don't really see. Okay? And there are times, even when we open our eyes, there are times when we don't see. Uh, an example is this event that happened some years ago in which fierce winds from a freakish dust storm triggered a massive f- freeway pileup along I-5 near Koalinga, California. Or Koalinga, California. At least 14 people died and dozens more were injured as topsoil whipped by 50 mile per hour winds, reduced visibility to zero. In other words, you can't see beyond your windshield. The the afternoon holocaust left a three mile trail of twisted and burning vehicles, some stacked on top of one another, 100 yards off the side of the freeway. Unable to see their way, dozens of motorists drove blindly ahead into disaster. And so 
our topic today also has to do with blindness and the need to see clearly. The Bible has a lot to say about that, and our text for today will be on John uh, 9, the whole chapter of John 9, actually, and basically talking about a man who was born blind. So we can... We can, we can read that now, and this is now chapter 9, verse 1. As he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Isn't it interesting that the question they ask is, who sinned? And I guess that's the way they, the Jews interpret physical infirmity or suffering is that all sufferings, all physical infirmities, all disabilities was the result of sin. And so that's their thinking. And I know that this is true for us too. Diba? Kung may nangyari, ah, maybe he disobeyed God or maybe he did something that was not, or maybe his parents did. Diba? And we interpret generation after generation i will punish you know there's that verse and so that that was your question who sinned yeah. the presumption that all sufferings is because of sin is just very jewish the man's abnormal physical condition was the result of something evil it's a punishment to the disciples they want to know who sinned and I, I'm just wondering why would they be interested as to who sinned rather than is it really sin that caused it? We need to understand that this blind man had very little opportunities in life because he was born blind. And if you were born blind, if you can just take it in our context, very limited po ang educational opportunities if you're blind. If you live in the province, actually you have no access to schools for the blind. And so you, you just basically stay at home or unless somebody helps you to go out. Even then, that disability gave this particular blind man in chapter 9 nothing in terms of education, nothing in terms of the quality of life that others are enjoying, enjoying around him. So he was far below the ordinary person in those days. He was looked down upon. He was deemed outcast and, as we shall see, condemned by religious leaders. So he was absolutely powerless. It's a curse to have a disability. That's how they looked at it then. In verse 3, we read now, John, uh, Jesus Christ answered to the question, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. But this happened so that, okay? So there's, there's a purpose for that. The works of God might be displayed in him. And as long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Now I want you to notice that we're talking about a blind man. And then we see words being used by John, such as, um, you know, Jesus Christ saying, using the words like day and night and also light, where he says, I am in the world, while I am in the world, I am the light of the world. So the point is being driven here that, you know, these are some metaphors, these are some words that have to do with light being able to see as well as darkness unable to see. So Jesus corrects her presumption. Blindness is the very condition by which God works is seen or will be seen in this person. He then uses the picture of day and night connecting their ability to work with the light of day. As long as he is in the world, there is light. Jesus is saying that with his presence, there is no darkness. So now, Jesus is answering the question, elaborating it further to say, look, 
you see this man blind, you're concerned about him as to who sinned, whether his parents or him, I'm going to talk to you about something else, a different kind of blindness. And he is using day and night as a metaphor for something he will drive home to them later. So there is a physical blindness. We know that. We're aware of that. But there's something else that we're not so aware about. And there is the blindness brought about by what? False presumptions and assumptions. So that is a blindness that Jesus is correcting right there and then. The, 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 the disciples had false presumptions. These led to wrong judgment of the spiritual condition of this blind man, and for that matter, spiritual condition of others, especially those who have physical disabilities. So let's be careful with that because oftentimes when we are quick to judge, that may actually show that we are blind. Our presumptions, false presumptions, makes us unable to see. Verse 6 now. After saying this, he spit on the ground, made some mud with the saliva, and put it on the man's eyes. So this is very unusual. This is very strange for us. It may even look unhygienic. Uh, but that's the way it is, and there's no... Not much comment made by John about that, about that thing that Jesus did, Ex except that it's, 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 it's what Jesus did, okay? So we, culturally, maybe it has some cultural issue. Uh, it, it's culture that it was just something that Jesus did and uh, all the others understood what he was trying to do in terms of that. So maybe they had healing kinds of ceremonies in the past or in, during that time wherein they, they do this. Okay? Uh, I remember sometimes, di ba, may mga practices tayo kahit locally na nilalawayan yung bata and things like that. So, I don't know about them. It could be. What is more important to me, however, are the words go, wash, okay, and that's Okay, go, he told them, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. To me, these are the more important thing to be concerned about, not, not the, the mud and the spit, okay, or saliva. So go, wash, and go to Siloam, which means sent. It is the trust and obedience that Jesus is requiring of the man in order to be healed. He did exactly as Jesus instructed. He went, he washed, and he came home. To me, that is very, parang to me, parang that the word home uh, touches something in me. And he came home, let me just have my, And he came home. So there is something about coming home. So vision results from faith and obedience to Jesus' command. Faith brings us back to our real home. Isn't that interesting? So next verse, his neighbors and those who had formerly seen him begging asked, isn't this the man who used to sit and beg, diba? Uh, remember, he was probably 18, I, I think my note says he was about 18 years of age, as we will see later on. 18 years of blindness. So everybody know that he was blind, and then he was probably sitting um, at the corner of the street, begging, and, and, and that picture is very familiar to us, diba? Maraming bulag ho na either they played an instrument and they, are, they have a, a corner that they always go to. But his neighbors were asking, See, ito, you know, isn't this the same per man who used to sit and beg? And so, some claimed that he was. Others said, no. Parang katulad lang nun. No? Hindi siya yan. Hindi siya totoo yan. Ma, siguro, iba, ano lang yan. Parang kamukha lang yan. Di ba? 
O kad, parang double lang yan. Or kuminsan parang twin lang yan. And here's another interesting thing about being blind. We see somebody and we interpret it differently. So we see something and then we, we, we come to the wrong conclusions. He only looks like him. So there's some, they have a problem with, with the, their own vision. Several days after, people familiar to the man were surprised that he can now see. Uh, I have not yet seen a blind man that I know suddenly see. But this is what is being recorded. And so it surprised the people. This doesn't mean that his neighbors did not recognize him physically. He looks exactly the person they know. It's just that they don't know if this is the same person or they cannot sort of accept that he was healed. Healing was also a very special thing that not very many witness. So it looks like him probably. He probably was not, was not where he used to be anymore. He was already walking. He was already go going to places. He was already talking with people. So it's, it's, it's an amazing thing, okay? Um, so I, I want us to sort of look at it this way, that several days after he was already healed, he was now going about, he's now talking to people and sharing his story. And maybe that's also the reason why he was sent. The word Siloam was sent. He, he's doing something. But others insist that he only looks like him. So blindness is, can come from not seeing what is real and true. Okay? And then he, ins he also insisted. But he said, next verse. Uh, but he himself said in verse 8 towards end, I am the man. Tamabay yung ano ko? They ask, I, okay. They asked him, okay, how then were your eyes open? They demanded, he replied, uh, the man they called Jesus made some mud and put it in my eyes. So she just, he just recounted what happened. He told me to go, and that's it. And then he asked, where is this man? They asked him, I don't know. I don't know. Why doesn't he know? Because he never, it, it, at that point, he was already somewhere else. Jesus was already somewhere else. Besides, even if Jesus Christ was there, he doesn't know his face. Diba? So now comes, so I'll, I'll recount. Here's a man who was healed. He was now walking around. He's no longer in the corner. He was talking with people, and people see him, and people sort of doubt whether he, that was real him. And now the Pharisees come in. And the Pharisees, who are the lawyers, Kumbaga, they are the experts in the law, wanted to investigate. So they brought to the Pharisees the man who had been blind, meaning to say he was summoned, as in a court. And there are two things that they want to settle. One is, did healing by, by this man who, who violate their Sabbath? And the second question is, is this really the same man that had been blind? So the, the Pharisees ha have those two questions. It's about their tradition of the Sabbath. And the second one is, if this was really true. Same man. Verse 13, so they brought to the Pharisees the man who had been blind. Now the day on which Jesus had made the mud and opened the man's eye was a Sabbath. Okay, it was a Sabbath. And we know that healing was considered work by the Pharisees. And there's also the verse uh, in which when you need a dough for, for, for bread, that is already work. And so when Jesus Christ sort of worked with the clay that was also considered a violation of the Sabbath. Therefore, the Pharisees 
asked him how he had received his sight. He put mud on my eyes, and I wash, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God. Bakit? For he does not keep the Sabbath. Okay? What's ironic is, this man is able to see. What's the argument? The argument is whether can you truly see? Diba? Can you truly see? No, the argument is about did this healer break this Sabbath? And if he did, he's not from God. Therefore, what's the conclusion? Your healing is fake. Your healing is not from God. Your healing is from the devil. That is what is being implied here. And therefore, you have nothing to be thankful for because your healing is of the devil. And if you were the blind man, that was how you would feel. Okay? This, God, this man from, is not from God. He does not keep the Sabbath. But others ask, how can a sinner perform such signs? So the Pharisees were divided. So they held a special meeting, and that's, that's what happened. You know, sometimes even our Supreme Court, they have a, a meeting among themselves, and they, they sort, of, uh, sort of argue on, on, on a certain case, on a certain issue, and sometimes they are divided, but the majority wins, okay? And compare the Pharisees with this blind man. The blind man, like I said, had no education. The Pharisees are what? Very educated. They're experts. They're experts. They interpret the law for, for, for the Jews. They have high status in society. This man has no status. They are regarded as authorities in Jewish laws. Anything related, related to God determines what's right or wrong for the people. That's how powerful the Pharisees are. And we see Pharisees. How many were they? I don't know. It's not mentioned. So can you see the power differential there? A blind man, helpless, powerless, and all of these judges in front of him. Did the healing violate the Sabbath? So the division of opinion rose among them, and sometimes it makes me think, is division good? You know, is division good? What's the purpose of division? Ba? Sometimes division in a group is good, especially if it reveals those who are right and those who are wrong. So we need to think about that. Those who are able to see and those who don't see clearly. Verse 17, they turn again to the blind man. Okay, so, parang nakakapagod na to sa, sa blind man because he's been asked so many times. What have you to say about this man? Diba? Sabi kasi, this is not from God. That's the, that's, that's what, that's what they're saying. Your, your, your healing is not, it's nothing. It's from the devil. So, sabi na, what can you say about this, this man who healed you? What have you to say with, to him? It was your eyes he opened, sabi, sabi na. The man replied, ano sabi niya? He is a prophet. Uh, I think it's the previous verse. I, no, where is it now? Here. He is a prophet. A prophet is a holy man. That's what, that's what his opinion. Actually, that was his judgment. So we see a blind man making a case for Jesus Christ as a prophet. Isn't that something to think about. Who do you judge him to be? Well, I judge him to be a prophet. 
unapolog un unapologetically. Unapologetically. Okay, here up no word jana. Unapolog unapologetically. Okay. So he is a prophet. Now is still unable to believe, sabi nga rito, the Jews still did not believe that he was blind. We're now here. Okay. And had received his sight until they sent him to the man's parent, and until they sent for the man's parents. Diba? In the presence of two or three witnesses, a case established. Now we have one, one person, and he was, the, he was a witness, but they didn't believe him, so what did they do? They asked the parents to come. Okay. So, next, next verse. Okay. His parents said this because they were... Oh, okay, sorry. The... the, the, the okay. okay. Is this your son? Is this the one you say was born blind? So it's an interrogation, okay? Hindi huto madali. Sometimes we read it and say, oh, okay, it's just, it's just like they were asking the parents. No, this was like in a court. They were, they were they, it's, a, parang ano, it's, a, it's a fearful thing to be in that kind of a situation. This is not an easy like reading and say, oh, ganun lang, nag-usap lang sila. No, it was really interrogation. They were being threatened. Okay, do you have to tell the truth or else? So, how is it that now he can see you? And then sagot hunila, we know he is our son, the parents answered. And we know he was born blind. So that was the testimony, confirming and, and agreeing with what the man already said. But now he can see, he can see now, or who opened his eyes we don't know. Huh? Really? We don't know? This is several days after. Actually, they know. They know. But they said, ask him. He is of age. Takut sila. He will speak for himself. Wow. You know? They had the opportunity to actually declare Christ, Jesus Christ. They healed, Jesus Christ healed their son who was blind for 18 years. And all they said was, we don't know. What a shame. You know? Alam niyo yun? The parents were afraid when asked. Remember, he was healed of his blindness. If you were a parent, especially the mothers, how would you feel that your son was healed? Some mothers, when, when their children get sick, especially babies, they said, Ako na lang po sana ang may sakit na ganito. Diba? The sac that sacrificial, uh, sacrificial love, sacrificial desire to just be the one to suffer. And now he was healed. Said, well, we're so afraid, we don't know. We don't know. Were the miracle and the miracle worker too small in the eyes of the parents that they cowered in fear instead of boldly declaring it was Jesus who healed their son? Are the Pharisees more to be feared than the Son of God? Sadly, they missed their opportunity to publicly confess and witness to the reality of the miracle and the belief in the Son of God. Then, next verse, a second time in verse 24. A second time they summoned the man who had been blind. How many times would you ask the witness a question? But that, that's, what, that's exactly what's happening. Tapos sabi nila, okay, this is your opportunity. This is now your time to correct yourself in case you don't yet realize that we really want the truth, okay? Then sabi nila, look, 
give God, give glory to God. Okay, so that's that's like saying, you know, better tell the truth. They said, we know this man is a sinner. Referring to Jesus Christ. So they know Jesus Christ. And why was, he, why was he called a sinner? Because it threatened. They were threatened by Jesus being a prophet. Okay. Um, whether he is a sinner, sabi nung yung, yung taong formerly blind, I don't know. One thing I do know, I was blind, but now I see. Nothing can ever prove anything else that I have experienced. And I mean, nothing else could be more true to me than the fact that I can now see. Whether you think he is a sinner, I don't know. I don't know him that well, but I see. And because of that, I pronounced him as a prophet. Then they asked him, remember, keep on asking. They kept on asking him, what did, he, what did he do to you? Alam naman nila yan, di ba? How did he open your eyes? They already asked that question. He answered, I have told you already and you did not listen. What, what, what's this? I have told you already and you did not listen. What's that? Either he's exasperated already, he's tired asking the same, asking, I mean, answering the same questions. Or... He was really fighting for something. Why? Do you want to hear it again? So he will just be repeating the same testimony he already said. They want to, the, the Pharisees want a different version. Do you want to become his disciples too? Okay. So, Balumala Bansnesha. Okay? Dumalaban na siya. That's his way of saying, okay, stop this. Ayaw ko na itong ganitong mga klaseng pagtatanong niyo. Paulit-ulit na lang. Why are you asking it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? That is very, ano, anong tawag dyan? Um, what's the term? Anong klaseng, uh, parang not, not ironic, it is, uh, there's a word, ah, sarcastic, that's it. That's, uh, he was being sarcastic here. So he was already fighting for, for what he thinks is right. He was standing up before these judges. You know? I, sorry, why am I pressing this? Next, please. So then they hurled insults and said, uh, to him and said, uh, Okay. Excuse me. They hurled insults at him and said, you are this fellow's disciple. Thank you. If, if I was, it was said, thank you. But they were, the, the Pharisees were disconnecting themselves from Jesus Christ. You know, we have nothing to do with him. He's a sinner. We're not his disciples. We probably are. We are the disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses because they don't, they're not accepting Jesus Christ. But as for this fellow, we don't even know where he comes from. And the man answered, the bl former blind man said, now that is remarkable. You know, you have your sight. You can see. You go around. You know what's happening in town. You don't know where he comes from. Yet, he opened my eyes. Parang sinasabi nung blind man, Remar that's remarkable. I was blind, but it seems like you're the one who are blind. Yeah? Yet he opened my eyes. He was very strong on his stand. He stood up for Jesus Christ. 
in the next verse, please. We know that God does not listen to sinners. This is, um, he listens to the godly person who does his will. Who's he speaking here? The blind man. Nobody has ever heard of opening the eyes of a blind born, a, a man born blind. That was extraordinary. That was special. And because of that, the whole town knew. Everybody knows that. That's why there was this meeting of the Pharisees, because they want to disprove it. They knew that it was Jesus. The man was subtly implying that because the Pharisees couldn't do anything, uh, they were not from God. Okay? Uh, let me repeat that. What the man was implying is he healed a blind man from birth. You, Pharisees, have never done anything like that. So who is from God? You or him? That was what is being implied. So he was actually confronting, fighting the Pharisees. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. You Pharisees have done nothing like that. You have never once healed anybody who was blind. And therefore, you, you are not from God. To this they replied... In that next verse, um, verse 34, please. Okay, yes. To this they replied, you were steeped in sin at birth. There again, there was, this was the original argument. I mean, the question, but he was blind because he was sinner. Okay. How dare you lecture us? We are experts. Nobody questions our credibility. We are the top. We are the best. Yeah. Because they already felt like they are being insulted. And they threw him out. They threw him out. The former blind man, however, as we have seen, was willing to face whatever circumstances. What he did, his parents didn't do for him. So who's the blind here? The parents were afraid that they will be judged harshly by the Pharisees. The man who was blind couldn't care less. He was willing to suffer any repercussion. He was not fearful. What he experienced Personally, no doubt, is an act of God. He did not know the man, but he acknowledged him. I mean, he did not know him personally. He was brave enough to argue and stand for the truth, even though his educational background is so low compared to the Pharisees. He was willing to stand up for what is right. Because of that, he was condemned. He was condemned. And then, it's now uh, verse 34. Um, we'll now go to verse uh, 30. Let me say. Um, can we go back there to verse 35 now? Yeah, 35. Now, this is several days after. Could be several days after. Jesus heard that they had thrown him out. And he found him. He found him. Uh, to me, found means you were looking for him. I mean, that's how it, it, it comes across. So Jesus looked for this man. When he heard that that's what happened to him, Jesus actually looked for this man. And he found him. And he said, do you believe in the Son of Man? Because the, the reason why he was thrown out was because he believed that Jesus was a prophet and that he was the Son of God. 
And so Jesus Christ's answer, uh, question was, do you believe in the Son of Man? Who is he, sir? Okay. Because he, ha he has never seen him in person. Who is he, sir? Tell me so that I may believe him. Believe in him. Okay. Jesus said, you have now seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. Then the man said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Verse 19, Jesus said, For judgment have come into this world, so that the blind will see, and those who see will become blind. This is a story of ironies. This is a story of contrast. And we see here that those who can see physically actually have a very, are, are the ones that are blinded. What we see here are some hindrances to faith. What are those hindrances to faith? One is close-mindedness, okay? Close-mindedness to, to the validity of another's views and experiences. Uh, some, what, what the Pharisees, I think, were struggling with also was that it's so difficult to believe a man who was born blind to, to see again. It, if it happened to any one of them, they would probably believe it. Okay? But sometimes that's true for us. Unless it happens to us, it's hard to believe it. That's just human nature. The, 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 the lesson here is that we need to be open-minded to accept the experiences of others, especially when it comes to witnessing for Christ and their personal experiences with God. Also, another hindrance is that we minimize the powerful works of God uh, by explaining it any other way. For example, uh, we can say that somebody who was healed miraculously said, you know what, I was healed miraculously. And we say, ah, oh, it's maybe the medicine that did that, or maybe the doctors did that, you know, but miracle, uh, uh, prayer, I, I don't know. We minimize it. So that's you know. another thing that we see is in, in the case of the Pharisees, there was a total refusal to accept anything else that does not conform to their personal understanding, personal interpretations, or religious traditions. It was a threat to them. So anything that does not conform to understanding, they cannot accept. That's true for us also. We struggle with that. Unless we sort of agree with it, it's hard for us to accept it. But we are being taught here to be more open. Also, sometimes the issue here is it is costly. To believe in Jesus Christ is costly. For some, it costs them their job. For some, clinging to Christ costs them their marriages. And for some, they've lost loved ones because they chose Christ. You know, some missionaries leave because they think that was, that's the right thing for them to do. And sometimes their families abandon them, no support. So acknowledging Christ can be costly, can be very expensive. But the question is, do we have a choice? Do we have a choice? Do we have a choice in them? Do we have a choice whether to believe or not? Do we have a choice? We do. We do have a choice. 
Belief is never forced upon us. It has to be from the inside. The person says, who is he? Tell me so that I may believe him. It is a decision. It is a choice. Belief can never be something that is just automatic. Okay? It takes the miracle working of Jesus to heal a physically blind man, but it takes a belief in Jesus to be able to truly see. Christians, as we say, walk by faith and not by sight. When we truly see, we are able to confess that Jesus indeed is the Son of God. If we don't see that, we're blind. And when we're blind, we cannot confess that. We recognize Him as our own personal Savior. Yet even that desire is born out of Jesus coming to us. Okay? Who sought the blind man? In the first verses, anong mababasa po natin dun sa first verses? Diba? As he went along, he saw a blind man from birth. And Jesus came to that blind man. He, the blind man never did go to Jesus Christ. That's, that's my point here. And also, after he was thrown out, the, who, who, who took the initiative to look for that man? Jesus Christ. And so it is with our faith. Jesus is the one who is the author of our faith. He is the one who comes to us. He is the one who is our home. He came to the man. He looked for the man. He chose the man. And same it is with us. We have to recognize that it's Jesus who initiated the encounter with us when we look at how we are called. But faith, though a gift from God, needs a person's decision to believe. Tell me so that I may believe him. One must want to believe. The Pharisees had all the proof. They didn't want to believe. They did not believe. They could not believe because they don't want to believe. Jesus does not force anyone to believe. The, cho the choice is ours to make. The Pharisees had that chance to believe, but they did not. Again, who is the real blind in the passage? The Pharisees, the parents. Unfortunately, the parents. So I have these reflection questions that I want to ask you. This, I, I, I want you to think about these thoroughly because these are not just questions you can answer easily. Would you rather be blind but can see Jesus? Okay. Automatic answer is yes. But that is, that is a costly yes. If you were to be blind now at this point, for the sake of believing in Jesus, would you say yes to that? That's a difficult question. It is an expensive question. It is a costly question. We need to think about that. But we have to come to the point wherein Jesus is more important than anything else. Would you rather be blind but can't, can't see Jesus? The opposite question is, would you, be able, would you rather be able to see but don't have Jesus Christ. Another question is, what are our own hindrances to fully believing Jesus? What are our, what are our personal circumstances that makes it hard to believe in Jesus? Or, say it another way, what are our hindrances that makes Believing in Jesus, something that is demonstrated. 
sometimes riches can be a hindrance sometimes status is very is is a hindrance sometimes relationships are hindrance especially uh, yung mga, you know, if you're courting somebody, things like that. Um, so these are hindrances. We have to look at them. How about our academic uh, achievements? Sometimes I, 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 I encounter people who are so intelligent by world standards but they don't have Christ. They don't know Jesus or they, they sort of explain away a lot of things. I know someone who, who knows a bit about the Bible, uh, but the way he explains it is very, very different. And he's, a, he's an intellectual, okay? So my question is, are our achievements, our intellectual abilities and educational and achievements actually makes us unable to fully believe Jesus. Last question is, what might things be, what are the things, sorry, that prevents us from witnessing and boldly proclaiming Jesus to others? I repeat, what are the things that prevent us from witnessing and boldly proclaiming Jesus to others? Let's think about that too. In conclusion, brethren, the miracle of sight is, is, is wonderful. I mean, the gift of sight is, is wonderful. Right now, we are all able to physically see. We are able to see one another. We're able to see our spouse. We're able to see a lot of things, even though a lot of these things we take for granted, you know. There are so many things we can enjoy because of the gift of sight. We can see colors. We can see blue skies. We can see white clouds. We can see the rainbow. We can see so many things. We can see colors. And that is something that we have been gifted. All of these things that we see in nature especially are something that should make us appreciate and point us to God. Yet along with what we can enjoy, we also have the sight in order to be able to see a person in need. A person who has disabilities. Person who may be very poor. We have the sight to be able to see this in others in our church, in our families, in others. Let's not forget that, that our sight makes us able to focus on people who are in need. But more importantly, we have spiritual vision. We have the gift of sight in that we can see Jesus Christ himself. When we read our Bibles, we get it. We feel it. We know it. We have experienced it. That vision is different. And that is exactly what this passage is all about. It is about, I was blind, but now I see. I see Jesus. I see him more clearly. And this miracle of sight, we now have. None of, none of us have undergone being born blind from birth. But all of us had been blind spiritually from birth. Now we can see. So let us then, brethren, acknowledge that, proclaim that, be thankful of that and show to the world that we have a light in Jesus. He is our light. 
He is our vision. Yes, we were once blind, but now we see.